you loved musicals as a kid. Well, here's your chance to destroy any happiness you gleaned from them in the past by taking a look at the top 15 worst movie musicals of all time. The Phantom of the Opera is proof that a Broadway smash can be destroyed in the right hands. Here, director Joel Schumacher phones in a film that Robert Wise could have farted in his sleep. <laughs> and creates a cheese film product on the level of your local community college. Did Warner Brothers forget that Schumacher also directed Batman and Robin? It's about a phantom who kills people for singing badly, played by a non-singing actor. And nobody can kill him. Not here, not here, not here. It's the movie that YouTubers have geeked out enough to discover 762 mistakes. The failure of the flopper up. If it's a roller disco musical that you crave, you can't do any worse than Roller Boogie. Starring that exorcist babe, Linda Blair, this time without the vomit. And some guy who could really skate, and that's about it. It's 103 minutes of bouncy bimbos on roller skates, going round and round, looking for a movie. Roller Boogie is proof of what can happen when Hollywood executives greenlight a movie and the blow is doing the talking. Put a stopper on Roller Boogie. With an aimless plot and insipid musical numbers, Grease 2 is the movie that makes you wonder why 30-year-olds are still in high school. Wait a minute, the first Grease did that too. With idiotic songs like Rockahula Luau, it's an all singing, all dancing lobotomy. Okay, sure, it's the film that made Michelle Pfeiffer a star. But that still can't restore the two hours that Grease 2 steals from your life. Hold the Grease 2. What makes MAME so very bad is the casting of its title role. Instead of Angela Lansbury, we get a non-singing and chain-smoking Lucille Ball, whose close-ups appear to have been shot through linoleum. Lucy croaks, does gags, and generally destroys a movie, which one critic called one of the most inept and repugnant items ever to crawl out of the Hollywood work. Lucy, Maine. Get it? Lost Horizon takes us to a tacky 70s version of Shangri-La for a soul-crushing two hours of musical numbers that are as exciting as meditating. With 11 bizarre songs by Burt Bacharach, the producers gave some of his cast a chance to actually sing with ear-splitting results. Can there be too much sunshine? And if the singing wasn't bad enough, Roger Ebert said it had some of the most incompetent and clumsy dance numbers I've ever seen. Lost Horizon makes you long for the time you sharted in yoga class. Lost Investment. Hello Dolly is proof that a box office bomb can almost bring down a studio. Starring baby Barbara Streisand in a role meant for a middle-aged woman. The film was the last musical directed by Gene Kelly, and with good reason. It's a cringe-worthy theme park of a musical that hit theaters at the same time the Beatles were dropping acid with the Maharishi. Ooh, bad timing. True, it has a few good moments, but Hello Dolly bombed at the box office so spectacularly that 20th Century Fox had to sell off its backlot, which is now Century City. Goodbye, dollars. Song of Norway was meant to repeat the huge success of The Sound of Music, but this time it's the scintillating life story of Edvard Grieg. It's a musical that moves at the speed of a glacier and with about as much warmth. Yes, it's white people yodeling about music and nature on and on, but in Cinerama. Wait, is this a movie? Or a promotional film from the Norwegian Tourist Board? 
and its stars, Carol Brady? One critic said, if you ever wondered why Florence Henderson never became a movie star, this film will answer that question. Tragedy for Norwegian culture. <laughs> Song of Norway. You'll never be happier to see the end. The Apple is the worst science fiction musical comedy ever made. Wait, there's only one other, but never mind. This futuristic musical set in the year 1994 boasts some of the skankiest numbers ever filmed and was so unpopular with audiences that some threw their complimentary soundtrack albums at the screen. Legend has it that director Manham Golan was so upset by the film's failure that he considered jumping off a hotel balcony. But instead, he survived and we got Life Force. The apple, it bites. The Pirate Movie is an unsavory amalgamation of Gilbert and Sullivan's The Pirates of Penzance with an inane pop score from the 80s. And its star is baby lesbian Christy McNichol? Not bad. Not great either, but this mindless romp can't decide if it's a light opera or a beach party movie. At the 1983 Razzie Awards, the film won Worst Song, Pumpin' and Blowin', sung by Christy McNichol, Worst Score, and Worst Director. Walk the Plank, the musical. If there's any better way to ruin a Broadway classic, then a chorus line the movie can't find it. From its frenetically bad choreography to its serious casting blunders, it's Richard Attenborough's empty shell of a musical that fails with every little misstep it takes. It's a musical where the dancing is so awesome that they added sound effects to all the moves. One critic called it Murphy's Law, the motion picture. Everything that can go wrong does. And I should know, because I was in it, and we knew it would be a bomb even during filming. A chorus line, the turkey. Nine is the musical adaptation of Fellini's Eight and a Half that nearly took the top three. First, we have last minute replacement Daniel Day-Lewis stumbling through the morass of flashy, trifling musical numbers. A script that's as aimless as it is dull. There is no movie. No kidding. And director Rob Marshall, who one critic said doesn't know a Fellini from a Linguini. When the Somonex stops working, fall asleep to nine. Staying Alive is the musical sequel to Saturday Night Fever, directed by Sylvester Stallone. Richly deserving its 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, here is a film about a disco dancer trying to make it big in a Broadway musical. A show with the director who just keeps saying, go to black. Go to black. It's a show that takes place in hell. It's a show that... What the hell kind of show is this anyway? Perfect. The whole premise revolves around the dancing of Tony Manero, whose greatest talent is dancing in slow motion. Where did he learn to do this? In the end, Monero maintains his street cred simply by strutting. Staying alive, pull the plug. The musical starring the village people is Can't Stop the Music, an absolute train wreck of a movie, with so many mindless disco songs, kitschy scenes, and idiotic dances that you want to cover your ears and keep yelling, love is love is love is love is love. And one of its stars is a pre-op Bruce Jenner in a crop top. It's the movie that can give you crabs just by watching it. Please, stop the music. Xanadu is number two in every sense of the word. This nearly plotless disaster pairs Olivia Newton-John as a goddess who romances non-singer or dancer Michael Beck with songs by ELO then throw in some weird numbers from the 1940s. Then why not throw in a has-been Gene Kelly and put him on roller skates? Can you say workman's comp? 
One critic called Xanadu an experience so vacuous it's almost frightening. I call it Xana Don't. And the number one worst movie musical of all time. Cats is that creepy Broadway show you saw as a kid but forgot what it was about. See the movie and you'll realize it's not about anything at all. With its phallic CG tales, deeply disturbing anatomy shots, and human-faced cockroaches, Cats brings about the same feelings as feline leukemia. With dated orchestrations and a seemingly indifferent director, this film coughed up a hairball at the box office. Cats garnered career-ending reviews like, Oh God, my eyes! Cats, put them down. Please like and subscribe to my channel. For a whole lot more, check out the rest of my work here on YouTube. And please, make a donation to my Patreon. Hey, I'm on disability here. Or just Venmo me at Butch Please. Thanks for watching.